The key to your optimal health begins in your gut. Now, a lot of people ask me about the gut all the time, and I say to them, we are what we digest and absorb, but many people say we are what we eat. Well, I don't think I like to stop on that note because we absorb certain foods and certain foods we are unable to absorb. So I say we are what we digest and absorb. Amazing fact, what we digest and absorb will affect our system. Now we've got about 11 systems and all of that is your whole entire system and also it affects um, your brain how you think as well as your emotions and that is a huge topic um, I cannot speak about even in five minutes but he said unto me behold thou shalt conceive and bear a son and now drink no wine nor strong drink neither eat any unclean thing I thought I would just add that one verse because it shows us that we should abstain from the things that are mentioned there. It was just a, a side one I noticed this morning and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put that in there. But everything is beginning in the gut as well as Hippocrate, Hippocrates concluded that all disease begins in the gut and I truly believe that is true. Your awesome gut is a system and that includes your mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and it is 30 feet long. I'm going to describe it a bit better and it comprises of trillions of cells. So your GI tract which is your digestive system, it has two names, is 25 to 30 feet in length from the top, tip of the lips to the end of the anus for adults and many glands cavities hormones um, wave-like muscle action uh, which is called peristalsis now I'm not going to get too technical because it's a subject that can be too technical so I like to make everything as simple as possible essentially your GI tract is outside of the rest of the body like the hole in a donut and it's a critical exchange area where your nutrients come in your toxins and foreign invaders are kept out and wastes are deposited for excretion along that line so the critical lining of all cavities in the GI tract has an extremely vital role of separating the good from the bad and I've just gone backwards now the stomach mucosal layer comprises nearly 80% of your active cells. So this might be foreign language to you. All you need to remember is your mucosal layer, which is a layer in your gut. And it actually shows there what the layer is all about. And uh, any disruptions to your mucosal layer can trigger your immune response. And by that, what I'm saying is when you're going to put unhealthy foods, any type of drugs, alcohol, or any harmful substance, it is going to cause a problem for your immune system. And over two thirds of your entire immune system in this mucosal lining, it, uh, if damaged, we are far less protected because your immune system is actually your military. That is what shoots out and keeps your body, the rest of your body healthy. And that is why we are so particular with what goes in. And you know, people are not as focused as they should be. So in the stomach, we have gastritis or ulcers. And this is when our stomach lining, our gut is affected. In the, intest in the intestines, if we, having, um, if we have some damage there, we either will have malnutrition, leaky gut, as many people know it, which is another massive topic. Like I said, I can talk days on this subject. And uh, leaky gut leads to all sorts of diseases, autoimmune as well, and the colon diverticulitis. And diverticulitis in your colon looks like massive holes in your colon, and they look almost like gangrene somewhat. 
and that's your colon, which you want to keep nice and clean. And unfortunately for many, um, the colon becomes so filthy with the nutrition we eat. You see, your colon is not a straight line. It's actually ridges. And the years of eating poor nutrition ends up caught in those ridges. And it becomes like a gluey substance. And then we wonder, why am I getting so many either, um, you know, diarrhea, constipation, you get different symptoms happening. And that's because we have particles that will break away from the inside of the colon ridges and start passing through back through the system and that causes some major problems. There are between 500 to 1,000 different species of bacteria that live in your gut. But by the way, we, we need some of these bacteria. Some of them are helpful. They stimulate your immune system and they actually help you to fight disease and even produce vitamins like vitamin K, which is a vitamin that is very, very seldom spoken of. And an overload of vitamin D can cause problems with your vitamin K. So it's not talked of much, but I mean, it's not my topic today. I'm just basically throwing in as much as I can. I've been given 15 minutes. That's why I'm talking so very quickly. It is the primary line of defense for anything harmful that you ingest. Hence, you re really need to make certain your immune system is kept healthy. And you can keep your immune system healthy by what you feed your body, what you feed your system. Because not only are you feeding your body with what you eat, but you're feeding your body with what you put on your skin as well, which I talked about in my last presentation on Thursday night for some of you that are actually um, following me or coming to watch me every Tuesday from now in Perth. And um, in fact, 70 to 80% of your immune system is found in your gastro intestinal tract, which you may have heard the name GI, your GI tract, that's your gastrointestinal tract. But just below your intestinal lining is one of the largest immune organs in your body called GALT for short, which I'm sure you've heard of GALT. GALT is gut-associated lymphoid tissue. Your digestion is so important, it breaks down food into nutrients. Now, if you are eating empty calories, you're not going to be getting the right nutrition and to break that down is going to be difficult. And then we have other rules like, are you cooking your vegetables enough? Because we need our vegetables broken down for the enzymes to be um, assimilated so digested. So it's really important for us to watch everything we're eating. Everything that goes in needs to be monitored. And also your body uses it for energy, for growth, and for cell repair. Because on a daily basis, we are struggling with cancer. And sometimes people end up with the cancer actually, um, you know, being anywhere in the system, and for some it doesn't happen. However, our bodies are all struggling with cancers in there. Our cells need to be replenished. Every part of your system needs to be fed and uh, repaired every single day for better growth. So if you eating unideal foods like uh, KFC, like, you know, um, fast foods, you're going to find that your health at a certain age is just going to give in on you. And I say it's normally about age 40. And everybody who comes to see me past 40 always tell me, round about 40, this happened. For some, it's earlier. But for the most part, we find people's bodies are starting to break down round about the 40s. So food and drink must be changed into smaller molecules of nutrients before the blood can absorb it and carry it to all your cells throughout your body. And your body then breaks down the nutrients from your food. 
So hopefully your food is good food so that it can be broken down and used for reparation, nutriment, nutrition, and your body breaks down all of your foods, drinks, um, into the different categories as mentioned. Now I did say I've got a short time, I've got to go really fast. Amazing fact, there are 10 bacteria for every cell in your body and we have loads of cells in our body. So that for me was an amazing fact when I found that out. And another way of looking at this is numerically you are 90% bacteria. Not all bad though, because we need the bacteria for the jobs that I mentioned earlier. These bacteria are microscopic and only make up one to two percent of your body mass, but are needed for all the jobs that they have to do, as I mentioned already. The majority of your gut flora, approximately 85% of your gut flora is beneficial to your health, and the other 15% is made up of pathologic strains of bacteria or yeast and these are kept in check by your good gut bacteria and the good gut bacteria can actually harness the bad bacteria to perform healthful functions you know, it's great that you don't see these bacteria, and sometimes you don't even feel like you're unwell and you have bacteria because we have good gut bacteria that are fighting all these other bacteria. Hence, your immune system is where you need to make certain you are in a healthful condition all the time. And we know as we've had the COVID, and we've seen many people had the, the jab, sadly, their immune systems have been affected. And some of you may have had the jab because you had to. And that we are, you know, I'm especially sad about that. But I do have a lot of people coming to me to reverse the effects of the jab. Some people say we can't reverse them because your immune system is already um um, compromised. I believe that with great nutrition, with God's blessings, anything can change in your system. And I'm sure some of you believe the same. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you have had the jab, please don't feel you cannot have your system changed. I believe it can be changed. You need to, um, or if you'd like to come and see me out. My husband's telling me my time is up. So we need to remember our good gut flora is really, really important. And um, also one thing I do want to mention is, um, you know, people are getting drunk without drinking alcohol. It's with some of the foods they're eating. Imagine your body producing its own alcohol. And uh, some doctors, have actually done some of these tests. A patient of Dr. Anup, he's a doctor in America that I've got some research done from him. Uh, he's in Columbus and he determined, he, his client was determined to be legally drunk without drinking alcohol. And he actually achieved that. It was found that his gut was so loaded with yeast that it fermented the simple carbohydrates. On that note, um, I just want to mention, because I don't have the time, um, when you look, I don't have the time for any of that, but talking about the your foods becoming alcohol fermenting in your gut, did you know that packeted cereals that people are feeding their children with before school actually turn the gut into a state of fermentation? So these little kids go to school and their, their teachers say they jump in off the walls, they test them, and they say ADHD. Now, there's something that I'm trying to find because um, there's one slide and it's, oh, I think I'm, I might not manage to get there because of time. But they are saying you're in a state of ADHD. And then when you do the tests on being drunk without drinking alcohol, the state is ADH. And that's what I especially wanted to talk about. So I thought to myself, when I found these studies, well, actually, ADH, isn't that close to ADHD? So I thought, well, 
That's the problem that the children are having. They're having packeted cereal. What does Sister White tell us are the mixes? Fat and sugar equals alcohol. So look at all these packeted cereals. I know some of us have children. I have six grandchildren, and some of you have uh, are dealing with children all the time. And the parents are tearing their hair out. By 10 a.m., my children are jumping off the wall. First thing is to look at what are they eating for breakfast, because these children don't know what that feeling's all about. All they know is something inside them is making them feel unwell. Imagine you being drunk as an adult. How about a little child that doesn't understand that feeling? All they know is, and then the parents watch them running up and down, and they say, I can't keep my children still. But they're eating lollipops, they're eating um, Cheerios. I had a call from one of my students in the US and she said to me, I need help with my son. Please, he's, you know, he's part autistic and he's really ill. So I said, number one, what are you giving him for breakfast? She said, Cheerios. And I said, we need to talk. I don't have time right now because we were on a class. She was just asking me on Zoom. And I said, we'll book in and we will have to have a talk about your son's nutrition. So, you know, I'm so grateful that I'm teaching around the world. Um, I'm teaching, literally, I've got classes in Sweden, in Pakistan, in um in Fiji, in the US, in uh, New Zealand, I've got classes being run everywhere. And these people are beside themselves because they don't understand that the gut health is the most important. And that is going to affect our brains. It's going to affect how we think. It's going to affect everything. So let us start focusing more on what goes in. And then what goes in that's good is going to be well and truly used to build up our immune systems and what's going to come out at the other end is going to be what needs to come out. There's going to be the waste that needs to come. I'm so sorry that there's so much more I wanted to share, but my time is up. So thank you for listening.